Though hardcore fans may have seen the John Wick movies countless times and combed through them for references, fun facts, and more, the mysterious world of everyone's favorite dog-loving assassin still holds plenty of secrets. Thanks to the incredibly detailed world of the John Wick films, from John's intense backstory as a hitman nicknamed Baba Yaga, to the hotel that caters to some of the world's deadliest assassins, many fans might have assumed that the first film was based on a novel and adapted for film. Believe it or not, John Wick was actually a completely original script. In 2012, writer Derek Kolstad developed the idea and started work on a project originally entitled Scorn, about a man who trafficked in evil and finally gets some sort of redemption, only to lose it. You know the consequences. I'm not that guy anymore. After a few studios showed interest, he sold it to Thunder Road Pictures because they promised to make the movie as soon as possible. Though Wick was originally written as a much older retired hitman, Kolstad revised the script once Thunder Road purchased the rights, aided by Keanu Reeves. The film might not have been based on a comic book or video game, but the character of John Wick has made the leap to both. Dynamite Entertainment has since released a comic book series about Wick's origin story, and gamers can get into Wick's mindset by playing a VR shooter called John Wick Chronicles. For the full effect, though, make sure you play a few hours of Nintendogs first. From Bill and Ted to Speed, Keanu Reeves has appeared in an impressive roster of famous films. In 1999, however, he stepped into what was considered to be a career-defining role as Neo in the Matrix film series, a trilogy and universe that set new standards for action films and gave pop culture one of its best theories about alternate realities. As the techno-mystical Neo, the one who can control the synthetic reality of the Matrix, Reeves was cemented as a true action star, which made him an ideal star for the story of the assassin that all the other assassins are afraid of. I once saw him kill three men in a bar with a pencil. Beyond sharing a lead actor, The Matrix and the John Wick film series have quite a lot in common. The two directors on the first film, David Leitch and Chad Stahelski, did stunts on The Matrix, and Stahelski was actually Reeves' stuntman. John Wick Chapter 2 reunited Reeves with Lawrence Fishburne, who appeared as Neo's mentor Morpheus in The Matrix, and Die Hard fans may have caught another connection as well. Randall Duke Kim, who played the keymaker in The Matrix Reloaded, showed up as a doctor in the first John Wick film. Keanu Reeves had plenty of input on the film and worked closely with writer David Kolstad, who said Reeves was closely attuned to even the smallest detail that could help flesh out his otherwise mysterious character. With that in mind, it's no surprise that he turned to former crew members from The Matrix to help him create a great action film, not just for stunts, but for the directors. Though Reeves initially reached out to David Leitch and Chad Stahelski to see if the two veteran fight choreographers would simply design the film's action, he hoped they would direct. Luckily for Reeves, they were more than happy to take on the challenge. Having worked with Reeves extensively in the past, Leitch and Stahelski were familiar with both his prowess and his process, making stunts and fights on John Wick that much more seamless. Both Leitch and Stahelski have credited their work on The Matrix as an inspiration for John Wick, as well as a guiding light for their overall careers. Stahelski has said that not just John Wick, but most films he's worked on wouldn't exist without The Matrix, and both directors have said that watching Lana and Lily Wachowski work was a masterclass in directing action that still had an emotional core. Throughout his career, Keanu Reeves has become an experienced stuntman in his own right, learning countless forms of fighting and performing many of his own stunts. John Wick is no exception. To prepare for the role, Reeves spent months training with veterans from SWAT teams as well as former Navy SEALs. This was largely due to Leech and Stahelski's insistence that the star learn entirely new methods of fighting for the film, rather than relying on his previous martial arts experience. Reeves went on to do a large amount of the stunts seen in John Wick, and most of them with no double in John Wick Chapter 2, where the stunts and fights far surpassed the first film, up in the ante for Reeves as well as for loyal viewers. Early footage from John Wick 3 shows even more death-defying action, proving that even as he ages, he's still more than capable of stunning audiences with his stunt work. Actors sidelining as producers isn't uncommon, but one of the producers responsible for John Wick's arrival in movie theaters might still come as a surprise to most fans. According to the DVD commentary, Eva Longoria, best known for her role on Desperate Housewives as well as her various modeling contracts, is a credited producer on the first Wick film. Leach and Stahelski both noted that they've never met her, but they're grateful to her for writing a check. It's a nomination. Seven million. 
processing. Please hold. Whether you knew it or not, we have Longoria to thank for funding one of the century's best action movies. Leach and Stahelski obviously drew from their experience working on other action films, but John Wick also drew its unique tone from everything from classic action movies to horror novels. The two directors cited several direct influences on the film, which ranged from the classic Clint Eastwood western The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, to crime films like Point Blank and foreign releases like The Killer, directed by Hong Kong action auteur John Woo. Interestingly, while the film has the feeling of a neo-noir thriller, the directors have said that there wasn't a lot of noir influence on John Wick. Instead, they invoked directors like Sergio Leone and Akira Kurosawa. Kurosawa in particular, well known for incredibly influential samurai films like Seventh Samurai, Yojimbo, and Throne of Blood, comes up quite frequently when the two discuss the first film in the series. Beyond Kurosawa, Leach and Stahelski have also mentioned looking to classic action stars and directors from the 1970s and 1980s for inspiration. But their world-building was influenced by something outside of film. Writer Derek Kolstad mentioned Stephen King as a huge influence, especially to show how far a broken man will go, a common theme in King's many horror novels. Even though Stahelski and Leach technically co-directed the first John Wick film, the rules of the Directors Guild of America meant that only Stahelski could be credited as the director, while Leach was instead listed among the film's producers. Though the two clearly maintained a good professional relationship, they parted ways for the second film, and Stahelski went on to direct John Wick Chapter 2 as well as John Wick Chapter 3 Parabellum by himself. Meanwhile, Leach embarked on an incredibly lucrative career of his own. The same year Stahelski helmed John Wick 2, Leach directed Atomic Blonde, an action thriller starring Charlize Theron that also immediately became famous for its incredible action set pieces, especially its signature one-take fight in a stairwell. After that, Leach took the reins on Deadpool 2, the second outing for Ryan Reynolds' foul-mouthed mercenary, and Fast and Furious presents Hobbs and Shaw. Clearly, his departure from John Wick didn't hurt this stuntman turned director one bit, and he also stays in touch with Stahelski to help with ideas in an advisory role. It's fortunate for the John Wick series that it's been able to retain most of the creative team throughout all of the movies, especially director Chad Stahelski and writer Derek Kolstad, both of whom have been working on Wick since the very beginning. It's clear that there's plenty of material to mine from the John Wick universe, and Stahelski, along with plenty of audience members, hopes that the series goes on for quite some time. Stahelski noted that Reeves was heavily responsible for the story behind his character, and said that he would happily spend the rest of his career existing within John Wick's dangerous, violent world, adding, I enjoy making these movies because there's no limit. We create our own mythology. Considering the success Stahelski has enjoyed with the Wick franchise thus far, it's certainly understandable that he'd be content to keep telling this seamlessly endless story. One of the many things that fans love about the John Wick series is the careful and detailed world in which the main character lives and kills, which is full of small details without being obvious or cliched. Throughout much of the first film, audiences are actually unaware of Wick's past, until other criminals realize that one of the most dangerous hitmen alive is coming out of retirement. People keep asking if I'm back, and I haven't really had an answer. But now, yeah, I'm thinking I'm back! It isn't until he returns to the Continental, the heart of this underground world, to begin seeking his revenge that the world-building truly begins in earnest. In interviews, Leach and Stahelski have divulged plenty of details about the world of the film, including little ones that fans may not have caught during a casual viewing. One such detail is that no innocents die in the John Wick series, which includes police officers. And not only are police officers spared by the assassins, they have their own underground which works in tandem with the criminal underground, and each side essentially leaves the other alone to do their job. You uh, working again? No, I'm just sorting some stuff out. All in all, it's pretty sophisticated for a worldwide crime syndicate responsible for brutal murders. Yet another perfect example of world-building in the John Wick series is the use of the coins, which hitman like Wick can use as currency for everything from a hotel room to a well-stirred cocktail or discreet dead body disposal. Since these prices seem fairly inconsistent, to say the least, fans have worked tirelessly to try and figure out exactly how the gold coin-based economy actually works within the criminal underground. Hey, Harry. You keen on earning a coin? Some experts have even weighed in to say that this is fairly realistic when it comes to organized crime, while others have speculated that by pricing everything at the same point, the Continental prevents assassins from overstaying their welcome at the hotel, 
forcing them to use it as a simple stop during their missions. As far as the directors are concerned, their view is that while the pricing is all over the place, it also doesn't matter, because that's not really what the coins are about. Leech and Stahelski have said that they're essentially business cards that allow point of entry, as well as indicating that the coin holder is in the know. Wondering about the currency value is ultimately missing the point. It's about the custom, not about getting change back for your closet full of AK-47s. The hotel in the films, The Continental, is shrouded in mystery. There are a few important, very clear rules, including the use of gold coins and the absolute prohibition of killing on the grounds. And the Continental. You kill the man on company grounds, Jonathan. You leave me no choice but to declare you excommunicado. But naturally, fans want to know a whole lot more about how this place works. Luckily, the minds behind John Wick, including star Keanu Reeves, are working on a new part of their world that might explain some long-standing mysteries about the hotel, its guests, and its history. In early 2018, it was announced that Stars would be developing a television series based on the John Wick universe called The Continental, which would, as the name implies, focus on the hotel. Reeves is listed as an executive producer on the project, and executives from the network told fans they shouldn't rule out seeing him appear on the show as well. Writer Derek Kolstad will also be working on the show alongside Leach and Stahelski, lending added credibility to a project we're already excited about. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite movies are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.